Hello, how are you guys doing? Al Del Vecchio here for Farm and Family Missions Church. We are a new church plant um, affiliated with Impact Multiplied and a sister church of uh, Cross Country Cowboy Church. We're out here in Bow, Washington. And um, I just wanna give you a little video tonight on uh, Acts 16. God's done um, some work in my heart with Acts 16 showing me some things that I want to share with you guys because um, I don't like keeping this stuff to myself. The Lord, um, and as Christians, if the Lord gives us a revelation, if the Lord gives us excitement about something, it's not so we can keep it bottled up. It's not so we can keep it to ourselves. Uh, we need to share that and let other people know the good news. Our testimonies are powerful. Um, so this is out of my 345 reading. Um, if you don't know, just go to 345mytime.com. Uh, and we just, it's, a, it's an awesome reading plan to be able to read one chapter of the New Testament every day. It takes about three minutes and 45 seconds to read it or listen to it. And it's, uh, it's an awesome way to not only read God's word, but um, you go to the next level and interact with God's word in a meaningful way by doing the three essential experiences of a disciple. You just ask yourself, what are the tr what's the truth in this word that sets me free, right? Because God's word is the truth and the truth will set you free. Where are the promises from God in here for me? Okay, and then ask Holy Spirit, what are the adjustments and assignments that I can get out of this word? And then, um, he gives you any of those adjustments or assignments, uh, write it down, okay, and then obey. If he if he tells you to, to talk to somebody, then go do it. A lot of times your assignments will have a name assigned to it, okay? Um, a lot of times it's an adjustment. Um, you need to adjust the way you're living in your life. You need to adjust your thinking. And uh, that's all that's got, God is doing is he's pruning those branches back so that you'll, you'll um, be someone that uh, produces much more fruit than you were producing in your past. <clears throat> All right, cool. So I'm just going to go over Acts 16. Um, and Acts 16 is super long. There's a lot of really awesome stuff in it, and I'm not going to go through all of it. I just want to do a short snippet for you guys so this video doesn't take too long, okay? Um, what I want to focus on is Paul and his adjustment um, by the Holy Spirit, right? And how was the Holy Spirit adjusting Paul? Um, Paul was probably the most committed uh, or among the most committed apostles of Christ in that day, okay? Um, you could look at some of the other apostles and say Paul was probably the most committed all right, the way he was going about it. Um, Jesus himself showed up to Paul at his conversion on the road to Damascus and spoke directly to him. Paul, why are you, you know, he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Um, and then he told him to go to Damascus and wait. Um, he'll be shown what to do next. So that was very direct, okay? That's not just Holy Spirit, that's Jesus himself showing up and saying, Dude, here I am. Here's exactly what you need to do. Um, and that's really what Paul needed to be able to believe in Jesus, okay? But after you become a believer, we have the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit indwells you as a believer. As a new creation in Christ, um, you get an indwelling of Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit will guide you. Holy Spirit will lead you in the ways, uh, in the things that you're doing throughout your life. But it's not always super obvious, okay? You have to be attuned to the Spirit. You have to have God's Word inside of you and you have to be in prayer on a regular basis to be able to be sensitive to hear God's leading. Because a lot of times God's speaking to us, but we're drowning Him out with the things in the world that we're listening to. And I'm guilty of that way too often. God corrects me in that. Um, to just get quiet and get before Him. And... You can do that too. You should do that too. Just 
getting up early before everybody else, put some worship music on, or just sitting in the dark and quiet and get on your knees and pray. And man, it brings freedom, it brings life, it brings joy. It's just getting connected with God first thing in the morning. It's the best thing you can do for your day, for your life, all right? All right, so Paul had just gone to Derby and Lystra and he um, was headed to Macedonia <coughs> Uh, by way of an, uh, he wasn't. He didn't think he was headed to Macedonia. Let's put it that way. All right. So Paul went uh, to Lystra and Derby and he grabbed Timothy. Um, that he circumcised Timothy, not uh, due to a legalism uh, issue, but because Timothy's mother was a Jew, and Paul wanted to be able to use Timothy, who was a powerful. Um, disciple of Christ uh, who knew the word, who knew how to speak well, right? He wanted to bring him in synagogues to be able to, to um, teach the Jews uh, the gospel, the good news of Jesus. But he would not be admitted unless he was circumcised. So even though his father was Greek, his mother was Jewish and the Jewish lineage was always tracked through the mother. All right. So Paul said, okay, you're not circumcised. You don't have to be, but if you want to be more effective in this ministry, you need to be. Um, so he did it, right? A man in his 20s or 30s, I don't know how old Timothy was at the time, um, was circumcised. And just imagine the pain that he went through um, to be able to reach more people for Christ. That's dedication. <laughs> okay, so... Macedonian call. Um, start in verse 6. Um, I'm out of the ESV version here. It says, And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come up to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. All right, so that is a lot to unpack just in those couple of little verses, right? They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia because they were they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they speak of Asia here, we're not talking about Asia as we know it. We're talking about Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey. So they wanted to go to Turkey and, and preach the word of God, which is a noble call, right? Um, there's a difference between working for God and working with God, right? So it's noble to want to go give kids that don't have water in Africa, water, okay? But if that's your bright idea without you consulting God in that and you could try to go do that and you encounter nothing but failure and opposition and whatever and it doesn't work, don't be surprised if you didn't consult God, if you didn't pray about it, if you didn't get God's blessing in that. Um, working for God is often sometimes actually working against him because his spirit is trying to work elsewhere and you're not being sensitive to that. So Paul was sensitive to the spirit. He had a clear vision of where he wanted to go. He wanted to go to, to Turkey. He wanted to go tell them about Jesus because everybody needs to know that the Gentiles now have salvation. They can go, right? Or they can know. So he's about to head up there and Holy Spirit says no. Um, he doesn't tell us how, says but he was forbidden by the Holy Spirit. It could have been a dream, it could have been a vision, it could have been something audible, it could have been something that they both felt in their spirits were like, ooh, maybe we should not go there. Maybe they were physically um, just stopped. Maybe there was a military convoy or something that would not let them go. We don't know what it was, okay? But they knew that it was Holy Spirit that wouldn't allow them. So what, what does that tell us? Paul wasn't the right person in the right place at the right time to bring the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ to Turkey. God had in mind somebody else at a different time, at a different place to bring the gospel to Turkey and it wasn't supposed to be Paul, okay? Next, Paul's like, okay, well, if we can't go to Turkey, let's go to Bithynia, which was straight north of where we were, where they were um, they were trying to go northeast, so they said, okay, let's go north to Bithynia. Well, it says, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So they tried to go to Bithynia. 
Now, the Spirit of Jesus is another name for Holy Spirit. Okay, so Holy Spirit did not allow them to go to Bithynia. Again, we don't know how, if it was a dream or if it was a physical block or if it was a open vision or uh, just something in their hearts where they knew they weren't supposed to do it. Um, but if you're sensitive to the Spirit, you'll know, okay? God will, God will get your attention one way or another and you'll know. And they knew, okay? So God doesn't tell us the same way all the time exactly how we're to do things. You know, initially, Jesus showed up to Paul and said, do this. Here I am. I'm real. Believe in me. Now go do this. So he did it. And he believed. And he became a Christian, okay? Next, Holy Spirit is, they know they're sent out by the Spirit to go, right? The Holy Spirit, they said, set aside for me Paul, right, and Silas to go. Okay, so they went on this missionary journey, but they didn't, you know, they, they, they didn't have clear direction at every single step. They just had a clear direction to go in. So they obeyed, they went in that direction, and then they were adjusted, okay? So the cool, the crazy thing about this is Paul was led by hindrance. He wasn't led by a direct voice saying, go here, go there, go here. He was led by the Spirit closing doors. The Spirit closed the door to go to, to Asia Minor. The Spirit closed the door to go to Bithynia. So because of that, verse 8, so passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. So Mysia is, was to the west of them, and so they kind of skirted to the north of it. I don't know why exactly. Could have been a political thing, whatever, but they went to Troas, which was on the eastern side of the Aegean Sea. Um, technically still on the continent of Eurasia or Asia Minor, however you want to call it, what do you, however you want to talk about it, right? Technically not Europe. Um, so they went to Troas and um, once in Troas, it says a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So here they have a clear vision of where they're going to go next. They, were, they had a closed door. They had a closed door. Okay. And they knew the spirit closed those doors. All right. And then once they're in Troas, there's two interesting things that happen. One, there's a dream, okay? Well, actually it says an, a, a, a vision in the night. I don't know if that means a lucid dream where it was a very, very real dream or if he was praying at night and actually got a vision. Uh, it could probably be either one of those. But obvious that it was um, something that was not just natural, it wasn't the, the nachos that Paul had the night before. <laughs> It was the spirit that gave this to him, right? So they said, okay, there's a dude in Macedonia, i.e. Europe, where they did not think they were supposed to be going, um, who wants them to, to help them. How do you help somebody? Well, if you're on a missionary journey and you get a dream saying, come help us, uh, most likely that help they need is the gospel. Okay, so Paul knows they need the gospel. They need help. We're going to go. So... He doesn't think about it. He doesn't ask God for a second sign. He immediately acts. It says, and when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Now, here's the other cool thing that happened. He says, we. All throughout Acts, Acts is written by Luke, the doctor, okay? All throughout Acts, up until this point, all the verbology is we, or is they, it's them, it's he, it's Paul, it's Silas, it's Barnabas, it's Timothy, it's them, 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 them. And then all of a sudden in verse chapter 16, verse 10, we sought to go into Macedonia. So now you know Luke, the writer of Acts, is joining Paul from Troas to Macedonia. Interesting. So Paul thinks he wants to go into Asia Minor. Holy Spirit says, nope, okay? 
All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go here to Asia Minor. Nope. Okay. We're gonna go north to Bith Bithynia. Nope. Okay. I guess we're gonna go by my go uh, north around. Um, I think it was Mycia and hit Troas over here. Okay. So they're basically being guided because the only way they can go is the areas where. Um, the door, you know, the doors are open um, where they're allowed to walk, okay? So they get to Troas and they have the vision that they need, but then they pick up Luke. And now Luke, who I'm sure is a humble man, did not tell the story about how he met Paul in Act, in Troas. He just, he just subtly puts in there the, the, the word we to show that he joined Paul to go on his missionary journey over to Europe. Now, interesting thing about this is Europe had not heard the gospel yet, or at least they didn't think, okay? Um, not directly. So Paul um, thinks that he's gonna reach a few cities in his region. He thinks he's gonna reach a few cities on his little part of the world, right? He's going to go north. He's going to go into Asia Minor. He's going to do everything in this little, you know, chunk of, of uh, his part of the world. God closes the doors to those, okay? Paul must be discouraged. He must be thinking, what's going on? I thought we were supposed to preach the gospel. And then, bam, they pick up a doctor. They get a vision. And now they go, their mission is to go preach the gospel to an entire continent, the continent of Europe previously had not heard the gospel. Pretty awesome, right? Here's the other cool thing. Every single city they went to, pretty much, Paul and his companions had the crap beat out of them. They were stoned, they were they were whipped, they were beaten within, um, within an inch of their life, a lot of the time, should have been dead a couple of times, okay? Um, but don't you think it's interesting that God sent them a doctor in the city directly before leaving out to go to Europe, before, um, you know, all of the persecution they would face, all the physical beatings they would face. I'm sure, I'm sure Luke, uh, aside from being a great man of God, uh, was also uh, sorely needed to tend to their wounds that they would get on the way. So, um, Bottom line, when God tells us to do something, his blessing's going to be upon it, okay? Um, he's going to work powerfully when we do our part to act upon his leading. Paul knew that, he, that God had sent him on this missionary journey. He knew God's blessing was upon it, all right? And even when he hit a closed door, even when he hit a second closed door, he said oh, he kept sight of the big picture. God, God's blessing is upon his life. God's blessing is upon this mission that he's on. God's just giving him an adjustment. He's adjusting him, okay? Um, J.D. Greer says in his book, um, Jesus Continued, that God is the rudder for a moving sail ship. God is uh, the one who steers a pedaling bicycle. What does that mean? That means... That in order for something that, for in, in order for something of any mass to be steered, it has to be moving in one direction to begin with. Okay, so we need to get off our butts and do what we can do, so that God can do only what He can do. Okay, um, we need to do our part. We need to get going. We need to get started in a direction. Even if God gives us a course correction, okay, that's okay. God gives us course corrections all the time. He, it, he does it in love. Don't get hurt, okay? Just think, thank the Lord that he's giving you a course correction. He's setting your path straight, all right? Um, I'm re reminded of Proverbs um, 3, verses um, 5 and 6. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
In all of your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. All right, so we're to acknowledge God in all of our ways. Acknowledge God in all of our ways. Think about what that truly means. Okay, in everything that we do, do we have God's blessing in it? Are we praying in that moment? Are we submitted to God in it? Are we surrendered in it? Okay, when we are surrendered in all our ways, God will surely set our feet on the exact path that it needs to be. Okay. Just remember that surrender is not a bad thing. Surrender is an amazing thing. Because when you surrender to the Lord, all you're doing, like before you were a Christian, you were just trying to be something that you thought that the world was basically telling you that you were. Or, or you were trying to live up to something in the world. Right, you were trying to be someone great. You wanted to be someone rich. You wanted to be someone famous. Um, you wanted to be able to have everything um, that you thought you needed to make you happy. And you slowly realized that none of that could make you happy. None of that could make you rich. None of that could make you free. None of that could give you joy. None of that could give you peace. The only one that can give you peace, the only one that can give you freedom, the only one that can give you joy is Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. John 1 says that the entire world and all of creation was made through Jesus Christ. And there was not anything made in all of creation that wasn't made through Jesus. Okay? Jesus made you. Okay? God made you through Christ because that was his plan from the beginning of time. All right? And then he knew. He knew that you would be in rebellion, he knew that God's perfect standard of being sin sinless, which the only payment for is blood, which is death, the only payment that could be given is his son that could save humanity. So God gave his only son to die on a cross. He sent him down to earth, God in the flesh, okay? Jesus is, the, is God in the flesh, all right? Came down to earth, humbled himself as a man, died on that cross as a perfect sinless lamb, rose three days later, spent 40 days, and showed himself to over 500 people. Gave them the great commission and ascended to heaven and is sitting at the right hand of the Father waiting for the final judgment at the end of days. That's my Jesus, okay? And all surrendering does is you're giving up who you thought you wanted to be, but all it did was give you chains. All it did was give you death. All it did was give you depression and pain and fear and anxiety and everything in this world that it, that promises to, to make you happy will never make you happy. All, all surrendering does is you give up that person to become, become the man or woman of God that God created you to be to begin with. You're giving up who you never meant to be, who God never meant you to be, so that you could become and step into and walk in the man or woman of God that he created you to be. And when you're doing that, okay, Timothy Moore says that God only blesses his own stuff 100% of the time. So you are God's stuff. God <laughs> only blesses his own stuff 100% of the time. That doesn't mean that life's going to be rainbows and, and fairies and sunshine. Okay? Followers of Jesus Christ will be persecuted on this earth. But wouldn't you rather live for something that has eternal weight, that has eternal significance, that... embodies love and abundant life and freedom and joy and peace rather than the crap that this world tries to sell everybody? Wouldn't you rather live for that than everything else in this world? And would you rather die for that on this earth so that you could live in eternity, an eternity, mean, which means forever with Jesus Christ? That's worth it, okay? It's so worth it.
super easy, okay? If you are seeing this and you need to give your life to Jesus, just follow these words. Pray them in your head, pray them out loud, and then tell somebody. Comment on this video, call your mom, call your friend, let them know you gave your life to Jesus, okay? And then get connected, go to church. Find somebody and let them know that Jesus is your Lord. God will send somebody to you, he will, okay? Follow these words. Father God, I love you, I praise you, I believe in you. Lord Jesus, I, I believe that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe that you came down on that cross. You came down to this earth as a man. You humbled yourself as God on this earth, and you died for my sins on that cross. But that you resurrected three days later and that you're living right now at the right hand of the Father. You did all that for me. Lord Jesus, I... Repent, I'm sorry for all the sins that I've ever committed. I lay them at your feet, I give them to you. I thank you that you paid the price for all of those sins in my past, for all the sins in my current present, and I, Lord, I thank you that, you that you paid for the sins that are even in my future. Any mistake that I make, it's paid for and done because you have paid for it. You have wiped my slate completely clean. You have. You, you have completely taken away any sin in my life. God the Father sees you as righteous. I'm starting to preach here. Thank you, Jesus, that you're my Lord and Savior. I choose not only to follow you, I will surrender my whole life to you. I am your disciple. You call me your son. You call me your daughter. You call me a saint. And now I have right standing with my Father God. Thank you for that, Lord. Holy Spirit, come into me. Lead me and guide me. I thank you for this gift, Lord Jesus. In your mighty name we pray, amen. That was a little bit convoluted of a prayer, but it's, it's just my heart. Guys, it's my heart. I started preaching in the middle of it a little bit because there's no freedom without Jesus. There's no freedom in this life without Jesus. We all need Jesus. I love you. I, I love all of you. And I want you to know that this life is not worth living without your Lord and Savior. Okay, um, music I got going in the background is Endless, Year, Endless Years by Will Reagan. It's really good. Um, highly recommend it. Get some worship music. Get on your knees and just worship God. It's some of the best time you'll have, and it brings freedom. Cry whatever tears you need to cry. Let it all go. Give it to Jesus. That's what it's all about, okay? Jesus says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. In him is true freedom. In him is true life, okay? In him is joy, everlasting joy. Mm. In Psalms, somewhere in Psalms, I'm not awesome at Bible addresses, okay? It says that, in God's presence is everlasting joy, and in his right hand are pleasures forevermore. You stick with God, you're gonna have joy, you're gonna have peace, you're gonna have freedom from all of the slavery and the bondage that weighs, has weighed all of us down in the past. All right. I love you guys. I know this is a really long video, but I just, uh, it just was my heart to, to get this out there and preach tonight. And I really hope you hear it. Um, I know it's kind of long, but um, anything worth doing is worth uh, spending a little time doing. Love you. Have a great evening, morning, day, wherever you're at. See ya.